Building a SaaS product is a difficult undertaking, but one of the key things that can make it run better and more smoothly is the software development process underneath it. In this video, I'm gonna explain how to manage a software development project and some of the tips and tricks that we've learned after delivering multiple products into production. I'm Matt Grace, Managing Director of Flying Donkey. Let's get into it. All right, to me, there's really five key steps that goes into managing a software project. Let's start with point number one. Prototyping. Prototyping to me is the best place to start and it's the best way to discover requirements for a project. If you start off any other way, I've seen them go off on a tangent already. What is prototyping? The prototyping is simply making screens that link together to look like what a user is going to see. So in other words, what you're going to get is a designer who's going to draw up images of the screen, potentially in Photoshop or Sketch or other systems, and then they're going to link those images together to make them look like the end product. A prototype is used very commonly in other engineering fields to make small little mock-ups of what's going to happen. And essentially, it's the same in the software development field. So what are the benefits of prototyping? Well, one of the best things about prototyping is that it's visual, it's quick, and it's cheap. And this is really important upfront. One of the biggest challenges of delivering a software project is not really the development itself, but it's making sure that what you're building is right for the business. Now, when you're building something for the business, they're not actually sure what they want until they see it. So it's a bit of a chicken and egg situation. An analogy I like to use here is house building. It's similar in house building. When you go to a client, they'll simply ask you that they want a four bedroom, two bath house. But exactly what that looks like is really hard to tell. But once it's built, they'll be able to tell you that no, that's not what they wanted. They actually wanted something different. And this is where they've done a similar thing in the housing whale. And that is they use 3D mockups and images to try and render people an image to show them what it's going to look like at the end product. And that's what prototyping is. It's essentially showing you the end product in the quickest and simplest way then they can go, yes, that's exactly what I want. And that's exactly how I want it to work. Prototyping is the key step to start in this software development process because it brings both the business and development together and makes it key that this is the requirements and this is what we're going to build. All right, so you've got your prototype and the next step is to start development. What I'm going to go through here is some of the key words and buzzwords that are really thrown around in development. The main one being Agile. Agile is a methodology of developing software. It was originally founded by the UK government and it's since become very popular in other IT industries. Agile is a really good way to deliver software and there's a reason why and I'll explain that later. The key thing about Agile is that you're only doing short two to three week sprints and you're trying to deliver those features in those two to three weeks. You're not looking too far down the path and you're really breaking everything up into very small chunks. There's multiple reasons for this, but the main reason is that you want to deliver things into production quickly, and you want to try and get that feedback loop in place. That is, you want to get the feature out to market as soon as possible, and get the clients giving you feedback and saying whether that's the right or wrong direction. So how does Agile work? Agile works by taking large pieces of work and breaking them down to smaller sections. One of the key things to remember here in Agile is that you actually don't know where your end product is. What you're going to do is you're going to start at the very start and just build what you know. The rationale here is that Back in the day, there used to be a methodology called waterfall, which is actually very common in the construction industry. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a second. What Agile is meant to be doing is going, we've got all this project to build, but let's just concentrate on this first section. We wanna just get that built in the best way that we can that we know right now. And as the requirements are gonna change throughout the project, we're only gonna concentrate on them at that point. So let's just say you've gotta build six pages in your web app. What you'll first do is say, we've got six pages to build and we're just gonna concentrate on this first one. Now you're concentrating on this one web page. Now you're gonna break that web page up into say four or five user stories. Those user stories are gonna be around what sections on that page are gonna do what. Maybe the top part is gonna be a graph, the middle part may be a form, and the bottom part may be some other buttons that need to be clicked. Each of those will come to their own user story, and they'll get estimated up in a sprint-like fashion. Then they'll be handed out to developers one by one, and they'll be delivered in that two to three week sprint. The idea here is that we're just concentrating on these small sections and trying to get that one page out in production. We're not sitting back and trying to deliver all six pages and all the functionality that's on it, we're just concentrating on these small things and trying to get it through. So how does this differ to Waterfall? Well, in the Waterfall methodology, if we use my example from previously, what they would try and do is we would try and put the requirements together for all six of those pages. So they'd go away and they'd write up all the requirements for those six pages. They then go through each page and work out what sections they need to do on each page. And they would have come back with 18 or 20 or 30 different requirements across those pages. The problem is that getting those requirements together takes a significant period of time. And through that period of time, things change. And so while those requirements are being written, the business moves and changes. Other requirements are needed, or the clients need other stuff done. And that's where Waterfall starts to fall down. Once you've got those requirements done, you've now got all these requirements, that's fantastic, but the actual situation has changed. So you start trying to build these requirements, but as you're building them, it's actually falling over. Now, I talked about construction before, and construction is a really good analogy here. Construction still uses the Waterfall methodology in the fact that you go to an architect and you go to an engineer, and you specify the entire build up front. Now, the big key difference between building and software is that building is set. 
You don't come back and say, oh, sorry, I wanted four bedrooms, two baths, and then halfway through, you add an extra bathroom on, or you demolish a room out in the middle. I'm sure you can see that if that happens, you're obviously gonna have to go back and get it re-architected and re-engineered. And that's the same thing with waterfall. If you simply come on halfway through in a software project, and you start adding on or changing things, you're gonna to have to go back and redo things from the start. That's what Agile is trying to solve. It's trying to say, let's just do the things that we know we need to do right now, and then we'll add on those things and changes because we know they're gonna come in later. Agile works well in the software world and on the construction world, because if you didn't have those set plans in the construction world, you wouldn't know how to engineer it at the bottom. Whereas in the software world, the, en the engineering and architecture is generally very similar, regardless of what you build on top of it. So therefore, you're able to add those pieces on and not confuse things quite easily. Agile, if done correctly, is a really great way to deliver software. And in my opinion, the best thing about Agile is really getting that feedback loop. That is delivering those short sprints to the customers and then getting their feedback on the product. While you think you know what's best for your product, the people who actually know best is your clients, the ones who are gonna pay you money. And if you do a waterfall methodology, what that does is it pushes out your delivery dates because you're gonna to wanna to deliver those whole six pages in one hit, which may take six months to 12, six to 12 months. But if you do the agile methodology, you may only release a page every month. And by the time you release a second page, you actually realize that some of those things that you were gonna do on the other pages are not really needed. So you can pivot and turn in an Agile methodology. As you can see, Agile has numerous improvements over the waterfall methodology for software development. But not only that, it helps deliver a better product, it's more motivating for the team, and it's easier to deliver if done correctly. All right, so you develop a product, hopefully in an Agile way. The next step here is testing. Testing is vitally important to make sure that what you've built is actually what you wanted, and that there's no bugs or issues in the code. There's numerous ways to test and numerous things you should test, so I'm gonna jump into them now. Functional testing. Functional testing is the most obvious testing and everyone generally does this, and it can be done in either a manual or automated way. The idea here is to test the functionality actually operates in the way the specification was written. This is also checking for bugs or features or quirks to make sure that what's being developed is gonna actually achieve the goal that you set out in the first place, and that it's actually achieving that outcome without any bugs or issues in the place. Functional testing can be done manually by someone simply going through the flow and clicking on the buttons and making sure it's working, or scripts can be written in an automated fashion to execute these steps by themselves. Generally speaking, manually testing is done first, and then automated regression testing is added later as manual steps become repeated on release processes. Performance testing is also another thing and sometimes missed in the testing phase. Performance testing is really around understanding if you've got a large client base and you've got these new functionalities going out, when these functionalities are run by a larger client base, are they gonna be actually having a performance impact? So maybe you're gonna release a new piece of functionality and it does all these whiz-bang calculations in the background. When someone hits the button in dev, there's not much data and it works perfectly. What about when someone does that in production on say a million sets of data? Is it gonna stand up to that? Performance testing is that. It's running them on a higher data set at a higher frequency to make sure that for the amount of clients you've got, if they hit your servers, they work. While this is testing the code, it's also gonna test your underlying infrastructure, depending if you have static loads or whether you have elastic loads. And it's really important to make sure that if you've got a great feature, that can actually perform to the way the clients want to. Security testing. The final thing you should really do before pushing your item to production is run some security testing across your system. Now we recommend here at Flying Donkey to use a number of automated systems here, whether that's gonna be in the early stages of your code or later actually black box penetration testing. But it's really important that any new code that gets shipped to production is run through one or two or three security checks to make sure that any of the code released to production isn't gonna have a security impact on your wider platform. These days, frameworks and languages are actually better built in a security way. As long as you're using some of the later versions of frameworks, you should be coding in the right way. But it's always important to do your security testing and make sure it's in your process. As far as testing best practices, it's really important that obviously every feature that you develop in a sprint is tested in isolation. It's very important that a regression set of testing is run across the platform on the key areas to both test performance and also that other functionality hasn't been broken. And the security testing is done on all the features and functionality to make sure that you're not releasing a new security bug when you're releasing new code. Testing is probably as important or even more important than the actual feature itself because there is bugs or a security feature that's released, then you're gonna have issues with that out in production. So make sure you're thoroughly testing your code and you spend almost as much time or even more testing it after it's been developed. All right, step four, and that's production. You've got the code, it's tested, and it's ready to go into production. Now it's about elevating and pushing that code in production and making sure it's working how it should for the customers. This will generally be done through a CI CD process where you're deploying continuously through your environments. You should have at least three environments being dev, QA, and production. And you should have already done one promotion from dev to QA for testing. You're either gonna deploy from a QA environment into production, or you may deploy from QA into a pre-prod environment. Getting the code in production is a really important last step because sometimes it's a little more tricky to get into production than it is in other instances. One of the ways we've been trying to help people get code into production is using infrastructure as code. Using the CI CD pipelines coupled with something like Terraform really helps us move that code in a similar way through all the environments. We have seen before, and unfortunately is very common, 
that moving code into production is actually a different process than moving code into QA. And it's really important that you want to do this in the same way so that you can catch any bugs early on. The worst thing you want to be doing is moving something into production when you don't know if it's going to work because you do something slightly differently in production than you do in other environments. Here at Flying Donkey, getting something into production is something we help a number of clients with. And it's a really key step to make sure it's actually going to work in the wild. And this brings me to my fifth and final step, and that's support. Once something is in production, here at Flying Donkey, we don't run away. This is where our work actually really begins. It's about supporting that product into production and seeing how it's working in the real world. So while we may have done all the prototyping up front and looked at the requirements to make sure it hits what the clients need, or we've done all the development to the best of our knowledge through an agile methodology, or we've done all the testing across performance, etc. Until it gets into production and the hands of the client, you just don't know how it's going to operate. And this is where really a quick support model is going to be important. Having a help desk with bugs that get raised and look at what's happened there and having retrospectives to work out how it went and any issues, is going to be critical in improving going forward. At Flying Donkey, we do run support desks and we support our SaaS products in that production phase because that's the most important way to learn and make things better going forward. If we deliver something and the requirements are off and the clients are asking for something else, there must be something wrong in the prototyping phase. If we deliver something and it's not working as quickly or fast as it should do in production, there must be something wrong in the development or testing phase. These feedback loops allow us to improve the software with you on an ongoing basis. And it's really this feedback loop that's gonna make your software better at the end of the day. Support is really the most important step in this five-step process. And while it may sometimes be overlooked, if you're not supporting your users in production, they won't be paying clients. And if you don't have any revenue coming through the door, it's gonna be hard to run a business. All right, so I've run through how to manage a software project. It's really key to start with prototyping, development and testing, and try and look at using an agile methodology. Make sure you're promoting the code into production in a similar way that you do on the other environments. And then the big key thing is to support it at the end. Breaking things down into smaller chunks is really the key thing here, delivering often and early, and building that feedback loop into your process. They'll both help your developers improve internally, as well as getting a better product out to your clients. If you're trying to deliver a SaaS product to the market and you need help with doing this, feel free to reach out and I'll be happy to have a chat. Thank you.